Today's topic is about AWS Athena. I will give a short explanation of what it is and then we will have a short demo to understand how to use Athena. All right. AWS Athena is a serverless interactive query service that makes it easy to analyze data directly from your S3 buckets using standard query language you generally use on your databases such as Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, etc. If you have unstructured or semi-structured data in S3 and would like to query them for different purposes such as analyzing or verifying or just to take a glance at the content inside the files, you can simply define the schema, create the table and start querying the data in S3. And remember, Athena does not load the data into any compute or EBS volumes. It directly queries the data from S3, uh, which makes it serverless and you don't need to manage any of the compute. Amazon Athena also comes with ODBC and JDBC drivers so that you can install and connect using typical SQL tools such as SQL Workbench or analytical tools such as Tableau or any business intelligence tools. And another important use case of Athena is uh, querying AWS service logs such as CloudTrail logs, CloudFront logs, Elastic Load Balancer logs and VPC flow logs. AWS Athena also integrates with AWS Glue AWS Glue is a serverless ETL service provided by Amazon uh, to perform certain transformations on data stored on S3 or HF or RDS or DynamoDB. You can create a schema and tables using AWS Glue crawlers and then load the data from Athena to perform the ETL jobs. Uh, well, AWS Glue does not yet appear in the associate level examinations, but it does come up in uh, big data specialty examination. All right. Let's go on to the console and see how we can use Athena. Okay, I am on AWS console. Well, AWS Athena is not yet available in all the regions. Uh, well, AWS keeps the documentation up to date regarding the service release dates. So please take a look at AWS documentation for available regions for Athena service. Okay, I'm right now in North Virginia region. So let's search for Athena in here. Okay, this is the home screen for Athena like a typical SQL tool, like SQL Workbench or SQL Developer, etc. You will see your databases in here and you can choose the database to query from and you can see the tables and views from here. We have a sample table in here and if you expand it, you can see the table definition. Uh, a sample table will be created by Athena when you access it for the first time. All right, let's create a new table from S3 by selecting it from here. You can choose an existing database or create a new one. Right now, I don't have any databases yet. So let's create a new one. So let's give it a name and uh, let's give a table name. And here you can provide an S3 location from where Athena can read the data from when you run the query. You can either provide a file location or a folder location where you have multiple files within the folder. Well, there are certain requirements Athena has when querying the data from S3. The first one is Athena can only query the latest version of data on a version Amazon S3 bucket and cannot query previous versions of the data. Remember that it can only query the latest version of the file. And if the data is not encrypted in Amazon S3, it can be stored in different region from the primary region where you run Athena. Let's say if you're running in US East one, you can keep your data in US West one or any other region if the data is not encrypted. But if the data is encrypted, it must be stored in the same region and the user or the principal who creates the table in Athena must have the appropriate permissions to decrypt the data. And next, Athena does not support different storage classes within the bucket specified by the location clause and does not support the glacier storage class and does not support requester page buckets. And the next one is if you issue queries against Amazon S3 bucket, with a larger number of objects and the data is not partitioned. Such queries may affect the get request rate limits in Amazon S3 and lead to Amazon S3 exceptions. S3 partitioning is basically how you name your object keys when storing the data into S3 when you have huge amount of data to be stored. So when you properly partition the data, you will get a better performance when you're querying a large amount of data within shorter span of times. So to prevent such errors, you better partition your data. Visit AWS documentation for more information on how to partition uh, your S3 buckets. 
All right. In this exercise, we will be trying to fetch some data from a CSV file, which is in S3, uh, which is under this folder. Uh, this was generated by an EMR Spark job, and that's the reason you're seeing this underscore success file and a CSV file with the name prefix as part. So you don't have to have this directory structure. Uh, you can have any directory structure and you can just give this particular path in the location under Athena. So first of all, let's take a look at this file and see what data is in it. So let's download this file and let's open it. Well, you can see a few columns and rows. Uh, it's easy to download and open uh, since the data is small. Imagine if you have data of large magnitude, such as uh, tens and hundreds of GBs, it's, it's near to impossible to open the file on your workstation without huge compute power. So in such cases, you can use Athena to do that. So let's copy this path and then go back to Athena and paste it in here. Let's click on next. Hmm, looks like we can't have special characters in database name. So let's remove the hyphen and hit next. And looks the same with the table. So let's remove the hyphen here as well. And let's hit next. In here, you can choose the format of the data you would like to query. Let's choose CSV in our case and click on next. In here, we can define the columns for the table. So let me grab the column names from the CSV file. Okay, I have added the required columns and the data types. Let's click on next. In here, you can add partitions. Uh, they help you improve the performance by columnarizing the table. Let's leave it as it is since our data set is smaller. Okay, let's create the table. Okay, we can see the table has been created. So let's try to query this table from this query editor. And let's run this query. And there it is. The data in the CSV file within S3 has been fetched using a standard SQL query. All right. Let's take a look at another scenario. Using CloudTrail, we can create a trail which can send the CloudTrail events as logs to S3 bucket. If you haven't seen our lecture on CloudTrail, please do so. So let's take a look at S3 bucket where we have the CloudTrail logs. Okay, you can see there is a directory for each region. And if you go into any of these regions, then you will find different log files based on the time of events. Well, if you're trying to find out, let's say, who logged into the console within last one week, it would be very difficult to fetch the information from these logs as is, isn't it? You have to go through each of these files and then find out uh, when a particular user has logged within the last week. Let's see how we can fetch this data using Athena. Okay, let's go to CloudTrail and then navigate to Event History and you can click on this link. And then you choose the bucket where you have the CloudTrail logs. And you can see a predefined schema for the table to be created and the location for the S3 bucket. This is predefined because uh, the events for the CloudTrail logs are defined by AWS. All right, let's hit create table. Okay, let's go and check in Athena if the table has been created. Let's switch the database to default. This is where AWS will create the table for you. And there it is. You can see the table definition in here. So one thing to note in here is that if you have any unstructured or semi-structured data in the form of JSON, you can define a struct data type or an array struct as shown in here for JSON and array of JSONs. All right, let's query from this table. Let's run this query and there we go. You can now see all the CloudTrail events in here and start querying as if it's a standard SQL table. And another important thing to note, uh, if you have to query any unstructured data like this field, you can do something like the column name, dot the field name, and then dot the field name and so on based on your data structure. Well, here is an example if you want type, principal ID, and ARN from user identity field. So let's run this query. And here is the result. All right, that is it for the lecture. Nothing complex in this lecture. Just remember that Athena is a serverless SQL service used to fetch the data from S3 bucket for analysis purposes. Join me in the next lecture.